Welcome, brother, to part four. This is the last of our series of the end times from Bible, Spirit, Prophecy, and the Rod. Um, the last part here we're going to bring in is the final, last parts of the final event timeline that we discussed in part uh, one, two, and three. And uh, before we begin, we ask that you pause the video, claim the promise of John 16, 13, and he shall guide us into all truth. Let's begin. Okay, so the steady verse is well known. Counsel is the writers and editors, page 37. We have many lessons to learn and many, many to unlearn. God and heaven alone are infallible. Those who think that they will never have to give up a cherished view, never have occasion to change an opinion, will be disappointed. As long as we hold to our own ideas and opinions with determined persistency, we cannot have the unity for which Christ prayed. And, uh, you know, We've talked about this many times before, but in our circles, and particularly yours truly, um, one of the things that I continue to bring up to the brethren is that we often use this reference to mother. And, uh, of course, it's true. You know, mother has a lot of lessons to unlearn, you know, in the, in the mark of the beast and the end time events and, and different things. She needs to unlearn a lot of lessons. But... The same can be said in certain circles among us present truth believers, the Vidian Seventh-day Adventist. We too have many, many lessons to unlearn. Not just many to learn, but as spirit prophecy doubles down, she says many, many to unlearn, which, which basically gives the emphasis of the unlearning as opposed to learning. The learning is great, but there are things that we definitely must unlearn. And in this, uh, series here we are uh, hopefully unlearning some of the false ideas of timeline of events and we'll get a clear picture of the correct way the message teaches it so some examples of studies to unlearn jacob's time of trouble uh you know of course that's based from the new codes and that says that uh, the primary Application of that is before Ezekiel 9, which is, uh, you know, not in accordance with the message. Uh, Assyrian Confederacy, of course, that has been brought in from the new codes and largely uh, invented and constructed from, uh, sad to say, uh, the leader of Salem, Don Adair. He is the one that, uh, in fact, uh, one of our brethren in our ministry has uh, him on recording, or is it a sister, I'm not sure, but somebody has it on recording where he admitted that he came up with that teaching, the Syrian Confederacy. And so it's a construction, and we have to unlearn that. Uh, intervening time, again, this is all based upon the new codes. Uh, that's the idea that there's going to be the ceiling of 144,000, and there's going to be a certain amount of time before Ezekiel 9 happens, which is totally, totally ridiculous. It, is, it just makes a mockery of the message. And of course, the last one is final events timeline. And that's what we're trying to you know, establish here in this series, that there are certain timeline of events that happen, and, and we should correctly know that. And this is one of the sad things about uh, us as present truth believers, is that the correct timeline has largely been broken. It's never been healed. It's never been fixed. It's never been shown as a correct event timeline for teaching. We've always been convoluted with the new codes, which throws into big, you know, mess. And, uh, you know, it's sad because some of the brethren say, well, you know, why are you discussing all this with Davidians and you should be going to mother? And, yeah, we should be going to mother, but what kind of teaching are we going to teach mother as a people? Are we going to be convoluted and teach them these new codes and all these errors that come with it? Or are we want to be straight and powerful and, and solid with the teachings to mother? So we have to get the, our, uh, our eggs in a row or, uh, you know, however that term goes, uh, ducks in a row. We have to get everything uh, as a people understood as truth. And then we can go to mother. You know, we still can go to mother because there's largely, you know, the Ezekiel and I and the... the uh, kingdom and, and many other teachings we can but when it comes to final event timeline that's what we need to really focus on today 
All right, in this last series, we're going to go over point 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. 144,000 are sent to out to the nations to proclaim the final gospel, Sabbath, as God's day. Uh, nine, the Sunday law is set up in the United States, then very soon after it goes worldwide, death decree enforced. Ten, the great multitude are called into his kingdom by the 144,000. Eleven, probation closes for humanity. Uh, Twelve, the seven last plagues come. Uh, Thirteen, Christ comes in the cloud, takes the redeemed back to heaven. So those are the final points of the timeline that we'll discuss in this uh, final part four. Before we do that, let's go over a review of part three. And basically we were showing at the, uh, at the study there that uh, the kingdom will be set up prior to to the loud cry. And in another reference that we can read is track 5, page 110 to 111. Uh, it reads, Revelation 11, 2, But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city, sh city shall thread under foot forty and two months. But why leave out the court? Why not measure it also? For since it is a part of the building, it too must be symbolical of saints, obviously because it represents the great multitude which no man could number, measure, of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues, Revelation 7, 9, the last who come from among the Gentiles. The court, in other words, is symbolical of the miserable, innumerable harvest of second fruits brought in after the measurable, number, numeral harvest of the first fruits, 144,000. It is not measured, investigated, because it represents those among whom there are no bad to be cast out, for they are gathered in after the cleansing of the holy, heavenly temple, Daniel 8, 13, uh, 14. After the judgment of the dead, after the separation of the bad from among the good in the church, as illustrated by the parable of the net, Matthew 13, 47, 48. They are those who... By name, my people, Revelation 18.4, are called to come out of Babylon, and who, with no and clean among them, Isaiah 52.1, come into the, now let me, let me focus on this, come into the already purified and living church of God. For more extensive treatment of the subject, of the investigative judgments, CR Track 3, The Harvest, 3rd Edition. This can be found in Track 5, page 110 and 111. So we see here that the people in Babylon are going to be coming into a church that's all ready for them to come into. So the kingdom is already set. As we went over before in Part 3, the kingdom is set. It's it, it, the, the land is ready. And now that doesn't mean that everything has been totally built up because we know that the there's going to be others that are to help build it up it's a process but it's largely ready to have the people come into it and uh, again this is a beautiful outline of the the events that are going to take place particularly the kingdom setup okay so number eight the 144,000 are sent out to the nations to proclaim the final gospel and the sabbath as god's day so again we go back to this harvest chart and we see that there's going to be a double work. Uh, the Church Federation is, is putting together their plans. And while all this is happening here, the uh, saints are back in the kingdom setting up their plans. And they're getting the kingdom ready for the great multitude to come in. And again, this is all in the period of the harvest. Okay, this is all in the period of the harvest. Now, does that mean that the harvest starts right here at, the, at the Ezekiel 9? No, it doesn't. We can't take that. Because, you know, the same thing with here, the sealing of the first fruits. Does that mean it come in starting of 1929? No, it doesn't. This is the period of that time. Okay, so this is the general outline period that that takes place. So we have to understand it that way. All right, so in White House Recruiter, page 24, we read, Let every serious-minded mind, re, minded reader pause to ponder what inspiration says. Isaiah 66, 19, and 20 explain that those who escaped the slaughter of Isaiah 66, 15, and 16 are to be sent as missionaries to the Gentiles, who as yet know not God. Hence, these escaped remaining ones are God's remnant, 
his first fruits of the harvest, his guileless servants, the 144,000, the elect. And only they, not others, the scriptures de declare, shall bring all their brethren from all nations in, in it, should be, it should say, in a clean vessel, into uh, the purified house of the Lord, his white house. What is more, no right-thinking mind can even begin to conceive of the possibility that with any less holy and formidable an agency than such a mighty ministry, one escape from sin, sinners, and judgment, can and will the Lord ever finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, Romans 9.28, thereby saving his people from the terrible tempest that is now about to break upon the earth and, and last it length and breadth. So we see uh, once again, brethren, that the 144,000 are the ones that go out and obtain the great multitude. Now, you'll notice that this particular reference shows that there is an escaping people. And it says, hence, these escaped remaining ones are God's remnant. Okay, so what we uh we're not going to touch on it in this presentation but we want to remind the the listeners that uh unfortunately the satanic agencies have brought in a counterfeit teaching of the 144,000 and of course you can read that in uh White House recruiter page uh 33 the same track here page 33 the enemy will try to uh, everything conceivable to confuse, becloud, and cover up the truth, especially on the subject of the 144,000. So we know that he knows that this is an important subject. In fact, that's what the rod calls it, is a salvational issue. You have to know this subject. You can't be teaching it wrong. You've got to know who, where, when, and so forth. The doctrine of the 144,000. And um, Satan knows that. So he's got his counterfeit like many other things, the Sabbath and Sunday and, and uh, you know, the rainbow and uh, gay lifestyle. He's counterfeited important things of the Lord. And this is one he has not uh, forgotten. And he emphasizes emphasis very, very strongly. And what is that counterfeit? The those with, brethren. Now, you can watch some of our videos on those with, but be very cautious and very, uh, I'm, we're warning you now, that that those with is a false teaching and you're going to be held accountable if you teach that now if you believe it that's one thing maybe you know the lord will not uh, hold you accountable because you don't profess it to anybody else but if you teach it and you subscribe to it and, and, and proclaim it to others hey there's going to be more than 144,000 sealed from the sda church at the time of ezekiel 9 and so we really don't know the number but there's going to be a lot of others with them oh brother we have to be very, very careful here. Okay. All right. So this 144,000 is the Lord's servant army. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. Before them, fire devours. Behind them, flame blazes. Before them, the land is like the Garden of Eden. Behind them, a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. They have the appearance of horses. They gallop along like cavalry. With a noise like that of chariots, they leap over the mountaintops, like crackling fire consuming stubble like a mighty army drawn up for battle. At the sight of them, nations are in anguish. Every face turns pale. They charge like warriors. They scale walls like soldiers. They all march in line, not swearing from their course. They do not jostle each other. Each marches straight ahead. They plunge through defenses without breaking ranks. They rush upon the city. They run along the wall. They climb into the houses. Like thieves, they enter through the windows. Before them, the earth shakes, the heavens tremble, the sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number, and the mighty, and mighty is the army that obeys his command. The Lord, the day of the Lord is great, it is dreadful. 
who can endure it? So beautiful scripture, brethren. Joel 2, verses 1 to 11, describing the work of this army. And this is going to be something to, to really behold because they're going to be unstoppable. Why? Because the Lord is at their helm. He's given them the, 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 the instructions, the power. Uh, and nothing can break the ranks. And this is why the the final uh, harvest of the world is going to be so great. The, the Lord's servants are going to do a magnificent job. All right, the results of God's servants' work. And of course, we know this in Revelation 7, verse 9 to 15, uh, 10. After these things I looked and beheld, behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white, white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Revelation 7, verse 9 and 10. So this is the ultimate work of that army. Yeah, they're going to bring in a great multitude and nobody can number it. It's going to be just very great. Now, this is one of the uh, charts that we often use in our presentations on present truth. And this shows you the result and some of the specifics of that work. And, of course, you know, you have the outline here of the tribes, and they're all breaking up in the ancient days. Uh, the borders were kind of haphazard. They were all over the place. And, uh, you know, they, they weren't uh, symmetrical like they will be uh, in the prophecy uh, that's uh Ezekiel 48, where it shows the 12 divisions, okay, and it shows the the, the lines, you know, and uh, so this is all going to be an organized work, and this is going to be part of the setup that's going to welcome in the the great multitudes. So in other words, there's going to be a lot of this already ready to go to have the great multitude, those stuck in Babylon, come into the land, and uh, you know it's beautiful because. Everything is symmetrical, uh, Gad on the bottom, uh, Zebulun, and, and, and so forth, all the way up to Dan, which will be on the top. And uh, so it, it's a great thing that's going to happen in the last days. All right, number nine, the Sunday law is set up in the United States, then very soon after it goes worldwide, death decree enforced. So the... Uh, Part, one of the main parts of the end time events timeline that we need to understand, and this again, it's based on this chart, is that there's a progression of the law, the Sunday law. And you can see that in the very beginning, after Ezekiel 9, that law is not set up. Okay, there's time that need there's time to develop because the church federation needs to come into being. They need to discuss what has happened. You know, they witnessed the gigantic war, all these false, uh, we went over this in um, one of the earlier uh, series parts, uh, where the, the, the false Sunday pastors have proclaimed, oh, you know, the, the people there now are going to be protected no matter what, even if somebody comes against them, God will destroy them. Well, guess what? They just witnessed the, the land being destroyed, and largely a lot of the people there uh, be driven out. And so they got to come together, figure this thing out, plead with the Lord, because they think that uh, they need to get right and, and square this thing away with their false teaching. And, you know, the present truth believers all know this, and they, they're going back and doing their work, uh, setting up the kingdom. Now, as this progression goes, and, and the, the saints have been allowed to do some work out in the, in the field, then the, the development of the, the false prophet comes on as well, and then it joins up with, you know, the United States with the 666, and that's the head, the head uh, leader. And they form the, uh, the Sunday Law. They start to declare that the Sunday Law is the way to go. That's how the, the people, that's the remedy for the people to get back with God. And, of course, you know, that happens for a while. And then it progresses into the worldwide Babylon Sunday Law. Okay, so this is the worldwide Babylon Sunday Law that takes place after it starts out in the United States. And we're going to show some verses that confirm that. But remember now, it, it doesn't, it, there's a progression here. It doesn't just happen all at once at Ezekiel 9. 
or, you know, it, it doesn't happen. Babylon, also United States right here, is formed, and it's all worldwide right here. No, it's the United States first, then it goes into Babylon. So this is the, the setup that happens on the progression. All right, so two of the main quotes that we have that confirm this is found, this is your first one is Shepherd Rod, volume 2, page 110. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save him that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Of course, we know that very well. Revelation 13, verse 15 to 17. This drastic decree of the two horned beasts shall be adopted by the nations of the world, and the image of the beast, which will demand obedience to an ecclesial form of worship, will be internationally set up. The mark of the beast is Sunday observance. So we see that it will be adopted from where? From the United States, two horned beast. So to be adopted, it must be first put in place. That's the only way we can understand this logically with, with human reasoning and, and understanding of the English language. This two horned beast has set up a, two, uh, a Sunday law, and what, what will, will it be? It shall be adopted by the nations of the world. So we're going to find that the nations of the world are going to like this idea. They're going to see the success of the Sunday law in the United States, and then they're going to take it on into the world. Now, the second quote is two symbolic code number two, page four and five. The anger of the nations will develop by the decree that the two-horned beast is to enact and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, Revelation 13, 15, for the fact that all the nations will follow in the footsteps of the two-horned beast. And the same crisis will come upon our people in all parts of the world. Six Testimony, page 395, showing that this anger of the nation is a worldwide confederacy against God's people as predicted by the prophet Zechariah. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Zechariah 12, 3. So again, we see another confirmation and this is in a, in a different book this is a symbolic code and it says the fact that all nations will follow in the footsteps of the two horned beast so what are they following they're following the sunday law decree the sunday law and um this setup is is naturally going to take place worldwide as the, as we're showing time again perfectly aligned with the the harvest chart All right, so again, we'll look at this one more time. The the, the, the mark of the beast, yeah, the, the, the Sunday law, mark of the beast here is set up in the United States, and then it progresses into the world. Now, um, just another important quote that we, we continue to emphasize because a lot of brethren skip over this for some reason. Is Satan working for, the God, for God's and his church interests or against it? If against, he will never do one thing to purify the church, or to fulfill prophecy. The only thing that would compel him to pass blue Sunday laws and go to make war with the remnant of her seed, with those that are left, Revelation 12, 17, is the purity of the church. When God, by the slaughter weapons of Ezekiel 9, takes away the terrors which receive not the mark, and even then, Satan will not enact blue Sunday laws until after he has exhausted every other weapon against the church two symbolic code number one page nine and ten so this is very powerful brethren we have to continually to bring this up to to brethren because for some reason we just want to skip over this we want to say you know what you can't harmonize this so just throw it off to the side no you can harmonize it this is harmonized with the rest of the message and that means that after ezekiel 9 there's no set the law set up for a while he's going to try other methods against the saints you know he's going to have the the wicked come after them and, and, and you know try to tr cause them trouble and governments and, and so forth and give them harassment and so forth there's going to be a lot of other ways that he's going to try to go against god's people but he will 
after he has exhausted all these other things and he, he sees the great success that's now happening with the with the great multitude coming into the kingdom he will have to use his big weapon and that will be the sunday law and that will be his mightiest weapon to stop or at least to put a um a constraint on the great success that the uh, 144,000 is achieving around the world. So the great multitude are called into the kingdom by 144,000. So at this time, and this is one of the great charts that the, the rod brings, is called the universal dairy, dairy is into full, uh, full implementation. Okay, it's working perfectly as it should. And it's universal now at this point. Okay, now the, the dairy has been working for present true believers in the church, but now it's the time where this dairy is going into the whole world and producing the perfect food, the nourishment that the world needs. And, you know, you can watch uh, uh, our videos and, 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 in fact, we'll put a link on uh, videos and reports on this study of the universal dairy, but it's a beautiful study. And, um, you know, it's a factory. You know, you've got a factory here with the word and it's going through the different processes. And finally, it's showering with this word, this powerful word, uh, butter and honey. It's going and showering the whole world with this message. This is also found in Revelation where uh, the earth is lightened with his glory. Okay, so this is all harmony of what is transpired. And this dairy is in place while the great multitude is now being called out of Babylon. All right, so the Lord escape bring uh, them in, final harvest. The escaped ones go to all nations, for, five, for by fire and by sword, declares the gospel prophet, will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nation, to the isles so far off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Isaiah 66, 19, uh, 66, uh, 16, 19, and 20. Since those that escape the slaughter, 144,000, shall bring all your brethren, all those who shall be saved in the time of loud cry, into the house of the Lord, then it follows that those who who escape are the ones who finish the work the reason they are called servants of god revelation 7 3 again this reference can be found in track 1 page 22 and 23. now we'll make a, a, a point again that uh this is another quote and and we've done a a, a report uh i'm going to make a note right now that we bring you both the universal dairy information and we're going to bring you a an escape report uh, information now why we say that is because remember we had mentioned that satan has using the, those with 144,000 as a counterfeit teaching well one of the most powerful uh methods or or, or processes to uh, uh, deny that false teaching is to do what's called an escape study now you go through all the rod, you go through it, and you find all the references talking about escaping. You will never find, just as you found in this reference here, one that says any other number that escapes than 144,000. So, brethren, we must teach what the rod teaches. It cannot be saying and making a mockery of the teaching of the rod and, and implying that 285,700, 595,300, 1,670, the 144,000, those with survive, they escape. No, we can't do that, brethren. That's false. That is satanic trickery. And you, the, the sooner we learn that, the sooner we stay firm and grounded, the better. Now, I tell brethren, if we're wrong, praise the Lord. If there's more, but we don't teach that because the rod don't teach it. It come from M.J. Bingham originally, and it was prom promoted powerfully and worldwide among us Davidians through Don Adair. 
That is Don Adair's teaching. He's got so many constructions. In fact, we were just invited uh, three or four weeks ago to this uh, uh, study. And again, they're rehashing the same old Don Adair teachings. You know, Gentiles, though, those, those are only the Israelites, the 144,000. There's going to be many Gentiles saved. Oh, brethren, it's just terrible what, what the, uh, the, the satanic agencies have done with this, stra this uh, strange fire teaching of those with. So just be careful about that. All right, we have another quote that's important, track 2, page 20 to 21. At the instance of inspiration, the prophet Isaiah wrote, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord cleave with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, and they shall bring all your brethren in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Isaiah 66, verse 16, 19, and 20. Note that these prophetic words say, that those who, quote, escape, again, uh, escape reference, being among the slain of the Lord, are to be sent unto the nations, and that they shall declare his glory among the Gentiles, and shall bring all their brethren out of all nations. At this great worldwide work of ingathering, at this great worldwide work of ingathering cannot be done I believe, brethren, should say as this instead of at. But anyway, as this great worldwide work of ingathering cannot be done after probation is closed, you must not let the enemy deceive you with good words and fair speeches. Show him that he cannot explain these inspired passages another way, and yet have his explanation in harmony with what the Lord has said in the foregoing scripture, as well as the foregoing statement, from the spirit of prophecy and it reads while the investigative judgment is going forward in heaven there is to be a special work of purification among god's people upon earth then the church which at our lord at his coming is to receive to himself will be a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing then she will look forth as the morning fair as the moon clear as the sun and terrible as army with banners great controversy page 425 this statement from the pure, uh, spirit prophecy also clearly indicates that the purification takes place before probation closes or while the investigative judgment is going forward in heaven and that then the church, clean and spotless, is to go into all the world conquering and to conquer prophets and kings, page 725. Again, this powerful quote can be found in track 2, page 20 to 23. We love it because the spear of prophecy, even though it wasn't given the light on the premillennial kingdom like the rod was, it still gave quite a few golden nuggets, such as this one, to explain the upcoming prophecies and, and the fact that the church is going to have a mighty work, and that is going to be from the purified church. All right, so we will close out the last three uh, uh, numbers of timelines. And number 11 is probation closes for humanity. 12, the seven last plagues come. 13, Christ comes in the cloud, takes the redeemed back to heaven. And we find in tract 12, page 56, without Christ, no system can unravel the world's tangle, but can only make the knot worse. Babylon the Great, therefore, can endure but a short time, one symbolical hour, and then she will be swept away by the crownless horns. Revelation 17, verse 16. The resultant time of trouble finally culminating in the close of probation and in the triumph and coordination of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Revelation 19, 16. Whose right it is to reign. Again, found in track 12, page 56. So this is the chart once more. And this bottom part of the roadway here, the timeline, is the terrible part, brethren, where everything is finally coming to an end. There's no more chance for humanity. It's the close of probation. And uh, we really don't need to delve into all this. It's, it's pretty understood among uh, Seventh-day Adventists and uh, Davidian Seventh-day Adventists at the time of the plagues is, is a time of terrible trouble and uh, for the wicked. And then, of course, when the, when the Lord comes and, and the uh, saints are called out in, with him to go on the traveling throne all the way to heaven, uh, everything else is destroyed. And, of course, you know, you have the dark 
1,000 years where Satan and his angels will be bound on the earth. They're not allowed to leave the earth. They're going to be here to witness their work, right? Their black, dark work, the results of their work. And it's terrible because they, are, they have nowhere to go. They're just among themselves and uh, for a thousand years. And this period is known as the millennium where the saints are in heaven enjoying bliss and uh, reviewing uh, the records and so forth. And then, you know, one more time, the, uh, the Babylon system will be given a chance, a hundred years, and um, prove itself that it won't change. And the uh, fire comes down to heaven. And finally, everything that's been damaged from sin is destroyed. And the new world was set up, the new earth. So this was the, um, the final culmination of the timelines. All right, so let's take a final review of our series. Uh, this, like I said before, this is a general guideline. Much more we could bring, but we just want to give the general points. Uh, the first next thing to happen is the gigantic world war over the Middle East. And I'll tell you with the Vince brother, and this is getting closer and closer. Uh, during that war, Ezekiel 9 church judgment comes. Uh, Michael stands up to, <coughs> excuse me, deliver 144,000. The time of trouble begins. 144,000 quickly begin their travel back to the promised land via land. Now, again, we, we emphasize there's not going to be any zooming, brethren. So if you're listening to a video that's teaching, oh, you know, once after Ezekiel 9, we're all going to load up in the chariots and be zoomed back to the kingdom. No, if you look at the preponderance of evidence. In fact, uh, let me make another note here. I'm going to put the travel to the kingdom uh, reports so you can read those as well from the message that if you believe that then you have to pretty much cancel out the uh, the fundamental beliefs because it says on the way home the saints uh, it, it, it go through Jacob's time of trouble okay so there's no way you can have Jacob's time of trouble when you're being zoomed over to the promised land you, you're not going to have trouble on the way home Right, unless you were saying there's some kind of a uh, another uh, Martians or something up in the air attacking us, and there's trouble up. At, I mean, let's be real, logical thinkers and close reasoners. Number four, the World Sunday churches begin their church federation. Number five, the 144,000 along with others begin to rebuild the kingdom to receive the great multitude. Number seven, the false prophet appears in the United States and begins his miracle work. Sunday worship is advocated. Number eight, the 144,000 are sent to all the nations to proclaim the final gospel Sabbath as God's day. So, number nine, the Sunday law is set up in the United States, then very soon goes worldwide. Death decree enforced. Number 10, the great multitude are called into the kingdom by the 144,000. Number 11, probation closed for humanity. Number 12, the seven last plagues come. Number 13, uh, Christ comes in the cloud, takes the redeemed back to heaven. So, brethren, we hope you've been blessed. This is a general guideline, and, and we wanted to put this out here because please spread it. Please uh, look at it. Uh, you know, do your own research. Uh, you'll find this is this harmony. You know, that's very important because we went over this, and I believe it was part one. Harmonization is very much key to understanding our message. If you hear a report and Many of the things that we brought to you in this report can't be harmonized with what the brother or sister is teaching, then they're in trouble. They cannot teach that because there's no such thing as harmonization with what they're teaching. The Lord is not uh, short in his, his message. He has harmonization. It's up to us to find it, up to us to... to, to uh, look it over and, and put the pieces together. I tell this all the time to the brethren. Any doctrine, let's say that this is the final event timeline doctrine, then that's what we went over. There are pieces of this doctrine. There are so many pieces. And it's our job to put those pieces together. And it can be done. The Lord is, like I said, not going to give us a puzzle that has a bunch of disjointed pieces or we can't even put it together. No. The rod message and spirit prophecy <coughs> excuse me, is very clear. Harmonization can be had. And it must be had. And that is when we know we're on the right track. So again, brethren, thank you so much for paying attention to these four-part series. And uh, 
Until next time, may the Lord continue to guide you into all truth. Amen.